people tell me that I'm crazy. I tell them that's exactly it. Thank you so much for coming on. I am so excited for this conversation. I feel like I'm just gonna walk away feeling like on top of the moon. Oh my gosh. Well, like setting that intention right now. Thanks God. I feel so <laughs> special, but I'm so pumped too. This is going to be awesome. This is so good. We're going to start off very quickly with hot seat. My one and only question now and my favorite question that I ask every single guest on the podcast, what is the best purchase you have made under $100 in the past six months? Okay. All right. So one, I've had a lot of COVID purchases, which I know I'm not alone in that. Um, but I'm a big eBay girl. My mom taught me like how to really like pick, choose, find. And I really wanted a Dyson humidifier. So I stocked eBay for like three months and got one for $97 and it's changed my life. My room's like a jungle now. It's so humid. <laughs> I want one so bad. I love that we're talking about humidifiers. I keep looking. How much are they originally? Like 400. So it was a great deal. Yeah, a really great deal. But um, it's incredible. And I think like I tried out a few other ones, but I really like this one. Does it make your skin like does it do you find that it improves your skin? Oh, yeah, totally. And I get living in LA. I'm from Kentucky originally, very humid environment. And since I grew up in that, I think I like am naturally very like acclimated to it. And my hands crack in LA with like this more dry um, environment. And this actually stopped it. So my hands are very nice. That was the reason I got it. I'm a big like skincare freak too. But I was like, hands need this. And it totally changed that. And then I can tell with just my skincare routine, I took out actually one moisturizer. So it works well. Wow. I am like that, but with Facebook market, like I literally stock Facebook market every single day. I just got a Nordic track treadmill this past weekend. And then I what? recently got a Dyson vacuum, actually not off Facebook market, but I almost did. I'm the exact same way. Like I, and then you can just set alerts for things. So as soon as like someone puts something up, I'm literally messaging them within seconds. Like I am actually like, I don't think anyone uses Facebook market as much as I do. I really think it's my favorite thing ever. So I'm going to start doing that with the Dyson humidifier because I feel like I really need that. Yeah, absolutely. There are ones I have. So I have this one in the cool and hot one and I got all of them on eBay. So I guarantee they're on Facebook marketplace and I'm afraid to go on there because I know that I'll make like extremely bad deci like decisions with money and everything. Cause I want everything. I have like buyer FOMO. I feel like oh, that's 100%. something I have to like <laughs> really watch. It's also such a good time for like things like Facebook market specifically, just cause it's local and so many people are moving, especially in LA. And a lot of the time people just want you to like pick something up for like $50 cause they just want it out of their place. So that is great. But before this starts into like a literal Dyson ad, um, I <laughs> want to talk a little bit about you. I feel like you have such an interesting story and I just think you're the coolest person ever. Also your Instagram is like the most encouraging thing. Like I see a post and I just feel so much better about my life. Um, but I, mean, I want to just talk about, okay, I'm so interested in your move to Silicon Valley. Like that's what I, at 23, I just need to hear all about this because this is like fascinating to me. Yeah. It's so funny because it's, I feel, you know, when it's your story and you're like talking about it, it's like, oh yeah. yeah. Um, but it's crazy. It really is cool what God did. And I, so I'm from Kentucky. My parents divorced when I was younger. Um, so I did grow up there, but I was always traveling because my father was an officer in the military. So he was moving pretty much every year and any break that we had, I was with him. So I got to be like very rooted in the South, but then also was, you know, cultured more so. It was a really cool way to grow up. Um, but by the time I got to college, I was like, yo, it is time to switch this up. I am not a Kentucky girl. You know, you always want what you don't have. I yes. was like, I want to go somewhere else. I need to expand. Exactly. And um, anyway, ended up staying. Um, I actually was going to go in Texas where, oh, so really? I was, I got in, yeah, I got a full ride to UT Austin. I was like, going. I was so pumped. I had a roommate and then just some family stuff happened and I needed to go to UK. So I went to Kentucky 
And I, in college, was very lost. And this is very important in the story and me, like I've always been very motivated and I've always been a good person, but I, I think I just like had no will of being in Kentucky. So I did a lot of just like random stuff and I couldn't find my way almost. Um, I switched my major a million times, all that. And I know I'm not alone in that, but um, it was just super interesting because um, I got to know the Lord like the end of college. And my parents both believe in God, but like we never really like did anything about that. Yeah. Um, and yeah. so I really like got involved in community there. And it was there that I really found like my entrepreneurial bug um, because I like found confidence from my faith. And I think it had kind of been taken away through some different stuff growing up. So it was cool to create. Um, but I just realized like there is a huge disparity between the opportunity for women where I'm from um, and Kentucky is the 49th poorest state. There's a like there's a lot of wealth and a lot of like need. It's a huge disparity. And so um, it, it was really interesting to grow up and see outside of that, but also know like there is a lot of like sexism um, and I, you know, navigated it even in internships and stuff. And so I was like, you know, I want to be able to go somewhere where someone like doesn't just look at me and like see like big boobs, little blonde girl. I want to go and like be taken seriously. So for some reason that meant Silicon Valley to me. And I prayed about it. I didn't know. I was like extremely underqualified, um, but I got into this program and I got a scholarship, told my parents, they like flipped out. They were like, I will disown you because I got a really great job with Coca-Cola um, and yeah, I kept praying, I kept praying and I just felt like I needed to go. And so I actually did a crowdfunding campaign 40, no, 72 hour out from like when I needed to fly to Silicon Valley and wow. I needed the last $8,000. Yeah. And, um, I went, this is so cool. Mentors are so important in life. Whoever is listening, find a mentor who has what you want when it comes to faith, when it comes to life. Um, and I like went over to one of my mentors houses and, uh, I was like, you know, what? it's not going to happen, Terry. She's like, are you all packed up for California? And I was like, it's not going to happen. My parents will literally disown me. Like, I don't have the money. I don't know what to do. And she was like, get out of my house and go give it an Allie Williams try. I have not seen you give it an Allie Williams try until you do that. You're not welcomed here. If you do that and you don't get it, I don't care. You're always welcome. But until you do it, this is not a place for you. And I remember being like, what? <laughs> you know, like, excuse me, you're my, in my safe place. And it was the best thing anyone ever did to me. Um, and I like posted my application video on a GoFundMe. It like really took off. And then I, I ended up getting some different donations. Um, the chief of staff from Kentucky bought me a plane ticket. It was nuts. So I wow. went there. Yeah, it was crazy. And it all happened. And my parents flipped. Like I was, my parents didn't talk. My dad did not talk to me for a year. You know, I think a lot of the times with these like amazing miracle stories, like it's easy to just put like the really beautiful parts out, but like there were really hard things. Um, and my, my mom was so upset with me. She didn't talk to me for eight months, but there's so much confirmation. And I ended up like doing extremely well in the program. And um, from there, just like dove into my entrepreneurial journey. And from that, you know, it's been such a crazy three years, but finished and then moved to Scottsdale, Arizona, a girl in the program and I have like joined forces and she's from Scottsdale, lived there a year. And then I moved to LA. So it's just been really interesting. So many different experiences, but so much um, hope and healing and lots of mess ups, but that's just, it comes with the territory. It's been incredible. And now I'm here. I love that. I also think, I love how you shared about your parents. Um, and while obviously I think, you know, parents, not all parents, but I think parents at the end of the day, normally just want the best for you. And they think that they know what's best. And there are a lot of times when they do. And then there are also times when they don't, they're human and they're people, you know, and, you know, parents aside, I think there's just always a lot of, not a lot, but there's always going to be someone who's against you, even when it's like a God opportunity or it's a God thing. Like there's always going to be people who are against you. Like, how did you kind of navigate that 
in just kind of get through your parents not talking to you and being like, okay, I know this is the right decision. Yeah. I think so there are two things. And, you know, I, I'm very logical when it comes down to it. I totally sound like a free spirit and I am in some aspects, but I'm very thoughtful and I very much live in my head. And so for it all, for so many reasons, for it not to work out, to stack up for me, um, I, and it not go away for months, that kind of told me like, okay, this is God, because I was praying about it. And it was something that in my mind, I was like, I can't do this. Like I knew that I couldn't, but for some reason I wouldn't let it go. Um, and quitting, I was not a, you know, like new person to quitting. Like I had quit a lot of things. So for something to, you know, not go away was really interesting to me. Um, and that was really indicative. And I think, you know, just, I think time is so powerful. People don't realize that, but time, I think we want what we want right now. But one of the biggest gifts that God has given us is time because as things pass, with every single minute we get our now, which we'll talk about. But I think beyond that, like the compounding of time will tell you so often, like what is yours? And all you have to do is be with God and to work hard and to, you know, like really be your best version of yourself. But, but I think like time is powerful in that. And so I saw that for the first time in this situation um, leading up to it. And you know, I have a lot of family brokenness and that's something I'm, I'm pretty open about. Um, there's, Same, there's a lot of, yeah, exactly. And I, and it's, it's beautiful. It's really devastating in some ways. Um, I have invested in a lot of therapy <laughs> because Same. of it, literally Same. Sure. Same. and I, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but I always will. And it's, and it's a blessing. I think generational blessings and curses like are real. You know, mm -hmm. like we, we are taught by our parents um, and I've been blessed with a lot of things from them, 100% more blessings than anything that could maybe hold me back. But there are, there are some really big things that need to be broken off. And that was highlighted too, through that, through that time, through the opportunity. And I had already known it and that was really indicative of it too. Um, and then I think, yeah, just like the, the other part is um, just I don't want to over spiritualize it, but when God really does put something on your heart, it feels different, you know? Yeah. And I think so often people talk about like your purpose. Um, and I actually encourage people to follow their curiosity because I think God has a really good sense of humor. And I think he has given you curiosity. Um, and when something, you know, when they're like, for when there's fruit from it, right? I don't want you to go do something crazy you're curious about that, you know, isn't right for you. But when it aligns with who God's created you to be, when you know your identity and you follow your curiosity, like purpose reveals itself. And so I was so curious and I, nothing else had felt like that ever before. And so I think it was those two things really. Wow, I love what you just said about curiosity. That is so good. I also, um, before we keep going with the story, I kind of want to talk about like mentorship. How do you, like, how did you seek out and find mentors? And was this something where you were like, hey, will you mentor me? Like, did you reach out with that exact verbiage? Like, how did that come about? Yeah. So for Terry in that situation, she was my best friend's mom. And my best friend's name is Biddy. She baptized me in Haiti. She's incredible um she'll always be my sister and her mom and I just like clicked and it was really cool to be able to have that um so I never really had that conversation she just kind of like took me in um I think from there I also had a lot of ego <laughs> and so as I've gotten older um I would say like a really constructive thing to do would be to identify what you want again um, and then find people doing that. And I think we forget how like crazy it is. Like history repeats itself. Humans were quite predictable when you read the Bible, when you, re you know, read history books. Um, and one of the best ways to learn from 
someone is by asking questions and like coming alongside them or learn about something you want. It's, it's through a human. So um, identify what you want and then find people doing that. And then you don't have to go to the top. Like if I want to be a billion dollar entrepreneur, like when I email Sarah Blakely, she doesn't respond. I still email her. She hasn't responded yet. Right. But I can find other entrepreneurs who are closer to where I am and then you know, emailing them, um, messaging them, DMs are powerful, y'all. Um, but finding someone who is ahead of you on that journey and then asking them, hey, will you mentor me? That is so powerful. And you would be really surprised along your journey who says yes, because it is just as much of a gift to be a mentee as it is to be a mentor. So don't be shy in that, but definitely like allow yourself to learn from other people. And they teach very well often. I love that. So let's go from Scottsdale. First off, I love Scottsdale. I love Arizona. I'm like, yeah, big Arizona fan. Um, same, but same. when did you end up moving to LA? Yes. So, well, so this is, this, this whole story, you guys, is it's such a freaking saga. Like, I don't know when I'll write a book, but I like, it's so interesting. When I got to Scottsdale, I was like so lost. I had literally $120. Um, lots of ideas, lots of good intention, but just <laughs> no idea like what was going on. And I did have a business, but we weren't churning revenue really yet. Um, and so anyway, um, that was a really interesting experience. And my business was like actually like taken on and I came on as a founder for another business. Um, and I learned so much from that startup. And the main thing was that like, I didn't want to work for that startup. And I was always a <laughs> yes girl. So I had to learn how to say no. <laughs> um, so that, yeah, seriously. And we're all still learning it so often, but I learned that. And um, then from there, I started my own agency. And I was just doing it more freelance, like social media management, just because it paid the bills. And then I realized like, wow, there's a disparity in the market of like women um, really having content created, et cetera, et cetera. So I created an agency called Leia Rising and it was awesome. And it was one of the most like beautiful experiences I've ever had. Um, but again, God like elevated that crowdfunding campaign so quickly and seamlessly and it all came together. And then one of the nicest things he's ever done for me is for me to think that that's how building a business was um, and then to fail to learn that that's not how building a business is or a relationship or a really solid foundation with God or anything. Nothing that is worthy of having is easy. We will have our miracle moments, but so often the miracles happen like in the dirt. And so I like was really good at doing something viral, at getting attention around things. I am a marketer by nature. So I like put this business out and God brought me like three amazing people. And I like felt that I needed to take care of them. So I brought on these employees and I just didn't have the revenue. We, we came, um, we launched in November and then no one's buying marketing packages in December, which is not obvious always when you are like <laughs> on cloud nine. Um, and I just didn't have enough runway to really get to the other side and to get to that new year. And so it was really hard. I'm like in the middle of Christmas, like letting employees know, hey, I've paid you for X amount of time, but I can't, I don't have enough, like start to look for a new job. Um, you know, going into new year, like just feeling like I had, totally failed God. Um, and anyway, that all happened, was in Kentucky for Christmas, came back to Scottsdale and was so confused. And I mean, like people don't talk about the bumps and I love to talk about the bumps because they hit me like a ton of bricks. Um, and if, you know, I'm sure if someone had said like, it's going to be hard, I wasn't even listening, but it's a real thing. Like there will be bumps, prepare for the worst, um, expect the best, prepare for the worst. And anyway, that happened. And I came back to Scottsdale and I was driving to get coffee with a friend. Um, and I was really deflated. Like I really had lost my confidence and I was questioning, I wasn't questioning God. I knew he was good. I saw him work enough times, 
we had enough clout there. But I was confused as to what I did wrong. And I was confused as to, because I had like, I was reading through my journal even a couple weeks ago of like where my heart was during that time. And I was just so dependent on him. Like I just believed so hard, um, but I wasn't confident in me and what I could do. And he, he can't use that as much, you know, we're tools. And, and so that all happened driving to coffee I'm like in horrible traffic. I actually had to move out of my house. I'm like, kind of like, okay, am I going to move back to Kentucky or what? Like I ran out of money and I was staying in my friend's guest bedroom. And from there, I was like, God, I'll, I'll go to LA. I'll work at Hillsong. Do you want me to work in ministry? What do you want? Because when it comes down to it, maybe I'm not that good at business, but I'm really good at like loving you. So is that what you want? And it was really crazy to let that go because I think like I had put being an entrepreneur on a pedestal, like on like anything else. I was like, I'm the next Steve Jobs. I'm going to do this for the women in the South. I'm going to change everything. And then crashing and burning and realizing, okay, maybe that's not right. Maybe God, what do you want? I'll do whatever. Um, I got a text literally at that coffee date and it was from a friend of a friend who knew someone who worked for Christine Kane. Um, and they were looking for a social media manager. And she's like, hey, I know you got a really great thing going with Leia Rising, little did you know. Um, would you be interested in interviewing for this? Because I think you'd be a really good fit. So got connected, applied. And within literally 10 days, I had moved to LA and done my interviews and gotten hired. And I went straight into, I like let everything go and did, um, you know, move into that ministry. So I was running social media for her um, and they're out of OC, but it was crazy. I was like, I don't have enough money for a place to live. And my friend, like that night after the coffee date texted me and was like, hey, um, if you ever, like, I know a lot's happening right now. And she's like my business bestie. Like, you know, those people that you can call Mm -hmm. and be like, yo, this is what the sheets are looking like. This is, you know, (laughs) this is what life really is right now. Um, she was like, if you ever want to move to LA, then you should know that you can stay in my guest room. Like, I will not charge you just come live here. So I moved to LA rent free, got a job within 10 days. It was like God provided, you know, and I had to let go a lot of a lot of that ego, but that's really what got me to Los Angeles. We probably have a lot of mutual friends because I know a lot of people at age 21. Also, side note, just for people who don't know what age 21 is, because I think it is the greatest organization in the entire world. And I think Christine Kane is the most incredible person ever. If you guys are ever going to go listen to any message, listen, what is it? What is it? Take your mat, Leia? What am I? Why am oh, I like lay on your mat. mat. So yeah, something <laughs> like that. Great message. Yeah. Everyone go listen. Um, but can you explain a little bit about age 21? Yeah, so A21 is incredible. Um, You can go to A21.org to learn more, but it is a human trafficking organization, anti-human trafficking. So they are really on the side of identifying, identifying survivors and then going in and saving them, which is really difficult. Um, There are between... I don't know, you know, what you know about human trafficking, but fast facts would be um, there are an average, and we don't know, it's it's such a vast thing and it's so secret and it's a black market, but between 20 and 40 million people are enslaved. It is modern day slavery in the form of labor all over the world, sex trafficking. Um, some really horrible things are happening in that and it's a very lucrative industry. So there are a lot of people in it. Um, and they're truly selling, stealing and selling humans. Um, and we would go in, I didn't buy them, um, build these crazy relationships with a lot of countries that are quite lost and maybe have more corrupt leadership. And then as a national organization, go in and save different people. And, um, from there, you know, we have some different all over the world, um, rehabilitation centers and, Yeah, it just completely rocked my world to see the inside of it because you can Google it and you can be like, whoa, or you can live it and see it. And it just is, 
it's so evil. Um, but there are people doing incredible things to stop it. So definitely go check out A21, consider donating and just like pray for them or whatever it is you do, like really, really educate yourself and um, know that they're on the front lines. I remember I went to a Propel conference, probably I want to say like three or four years ago at this point um, in La Jolla, which is San Diego, basically. And I believe it was the first time they ever had a survivor speak publicly um, mm-hmm. ever. And she came on stage and was like, um, essentially said, you know, I was actually trafficked 72 yards from where I'm standing right now. Like something absolutely insane. It's just so heartbreaking. When I lived in LA, especially, I don't, I'm not really sure why, but every single paper I've written in college, not every single, but a lot of the papers I've written in college and um, just like organizations, like my church in LA was like extremely involved with A21. Um, mm-hmm. It was always about like human trafficking and we would have like, um, maybe not work. I, yeah, it would be like a workshop on it. It's just like absolutely insane. Um, but yeah, I would definitely recommend if you guys can donate, um, obvi- like the very, very least educate yourself on it because it is absolutely insane. Um, okay, so let's talk about Malibu Social. When did this come about? I want to hear everything. Yay, okay. So uh, that all happened, um, just kind of hit the ground running, going into A21, and um, it was awesome. It was such a blessing. And I was like completely positive that that's why God had like had me on this journey. Like it was all to get me to managing Chris's stuff and, you know, doing propel women stuff. And it was so cool. And anyway, I was there for six months and then I was brought in by um, our HR woman. And the way that they hire is you're hired for three months, you have an evaluation and you're offered the like full time with benefits, et cetera. Um, and so I had that meeting and I, I had it later because of something or another and they offered me to stay. And I told them, you know, I know I need to pray about it if that's okay. And they were like, of course. And so I, I was praying and, um, I just came back and I was like, you know, I, I am not sure because, X, Y, and Z. And I was just like having these hesitations. Um, and anyway, I came back in and they offered me marketing director of Propel. So hearing that, I was like, this is why I'm here. Like, God, this is why I'm here. Okay. Like confirmation. And I, I kid you not, I walked back to my desk and I sat down and my butt hit the seat. And I was, I was so smitten. I was like, finally, these two and a half really hard years make sense. And, and then God was like, it's time to go. And so I, I will never forget my butt hit the seat. And I felt that. And I was like, are you kidding? You know, I was like, (laughs) no, there's no way, you know, like I finally feel at home. And, um, it was such a cool you know, exercise almost of faith, um, because I know what, I, when I hear him, it's not like I can hear him all the time, you know, it, that's a pretty rare thing. And I was like, dang. And so I told them and, um, I got to really speak into how they're structuring their marketing and that's something they're still growing. And it's really cool to see kind of like why I was there, um, to kind of, to kind of say like, yo, this is going to grow and you need to take care of your people and structure in this way and hire in this way and save money to, you know, really do this. And, um, and then my job there was done. So I left and I went to Hawaii for a month and I was just like, I cried in Hawaii for probably two weeks. I was so confused as to what to do. And, um, Anyway, that was like, I was working remote for them from Hawaii, came back, turned in my laptop and I had no income. And I was like, God, you know, I, this is a expensive place to live. I don't know what I'm doing in LA. Cause it was never a dream of mine to live in Los Angeles. And then from there, um, I literally, he was like, I'll, I'm going to provide for you. Like, I just need you to trust me. So I turned to my laptop. I slept 
through the weekend. I was so tired. I slept through the weekend. I woke up on Monday. A friend texted me and was like, hey, I have some people who might need some help. And I was like, oh, okay. Um, got on the phone and he like doubled the income that I had been making from Propel. Um, and I brought on my first two clients from Malibu Social. And from there, you know, it had just, I had grown so much and I understood how to steward what God had taught me. And I will never, like Chris always, Christine Kane will always called me like a Holy Spirit fireball. And she's like, you know this. And she really like spoke into me, like, you know, social media, this is your gift, like one of your gifts. And that really like allowed me to step out and be like, I can build like a good brand. And so, um, yeah, I started to work with more like influential people who needed to have that direction digitally. And now I have, you know, this agency that's a really big blessing and, and allows for a lot of people to have a voice, um, a lot of brands to have a voice that I believe in and can stand behind. I love that. Even just hearing your story is so uh, like refreshing, yes, but just encouraging. And I don't even really use the word encouraging. I don't know why. I was actually thinking about this the other day, totally unrelated. But it just, it, I think it helps a lot, especially I think lately with COVID, sometimes I'll feel either like I'm regressing or like I'm trapped, which I know neither one of those are true. But just feeling like, obviously, we've all had these plans that we thought were going to happen this year and like things that we wanted to do. And then um, I think we're all in this really unique position. We're all kind of in a unique spot. Um, obviously, some are hurting worse than others and some haven't really been affected. But it's encouraging to hear that now, especially with just the nature of how 2020 has gone as a whole, because it's it's like a really beautiful thing. Something I always say is like, don't be married to your first idea. Um, I didn't come up with that. That's just like something I've heard and like always say to myself, but um, just in uh, different business ideas, like for instance, like really small example, but I started my YouTube channel and I never had a plan to have a podcast and now the podcast has come about, but I grew up and was so tunnel vision. Like I was like, I know exactly what I'm going to do. I moved to LA at 17. I had all these things and I was like, I'm a hundred percent doing this. And I was so tunnel vision that I missed like there was definitely, I mean, there was like a solid year that I was like, I hate church, everything, blah, blah, blah. But I feel like I, I'm just afraid now of just missing out on what God has for me because I'm so tunnel vision and I like look to the left or the right and there's actually things that are meant for me. But instead I was just so tunnel vision. So now when things don't work out in some really weird way, even though it's really painful and it sucks and it's really hard, I'm almost like oddly excited because I'm one of those weird people who like loves growing. Even though it's the worst thing ever, I'm like, okay, well, let's see what's going to happen, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. That's And that's such a great place to be too, you know, like having that opportunity to grow, like thinking of it that way instead of like, oh, here we go, you know? Um, but I totally get that. Absolutely absolutely and that's you can't be married like it's married to an idea your first idea or any ideas I think to be too attached to anything kills it and so really living open-handedly as a business owner as a wife as a mother as all the things that we're going to be able to be in our lifetime um, that allows us to steward it the way that God would want us to oh I completely agree I want to talk a little bit about getting out of your own way. So Ali and I talked yesterday and I was like, are there any things you've been learning, ideas, thoughts you've been having? Um, because I know you guys love those kind of episodes. So um, yeah, can you just speak a little bit to getting out of your own way? Yeah. So this is like insider information, ladies, and if there are any men listening, gentlemen. Um, but, you know, I... So I live in Los Angeles and I got here and I was like, wow, God did this. You know, um, I'm in California. I'm from the South. Like I'm from a town of 4,000 people. We don't even have a stoplight, you know, um, to think that, you know, he did this. It's like, whoa, he's so real. He's so good. Um, you know, now I get to be great. And I think that was kind of the story that I always told myself, like, I have to get to the next place. I have to be in the city, in the, you know, have this much money, have this 
guy friend or a boyfriend, you know, like that kind of thing um, in order to be worthy or enough or on track or um, be used by God. And I think so many women, especially we like do that. We just by human nature will sit there and be like, well, when I have this, I'll do that. Um, and so it's crazy. Um, during COVID, I like was on a dating show, which like, I won't get into the details around that. Cause I haven't really like talked with my audience about it, but I was on a dating show and I actually, um, started dating a guy I met on it in Raleigh, North Carolina. And Raleigh is super similar to kind of like where I went to college and it's, it's not small, but it's definitely not Los Angeles. And, um, I flew, I have flown out there a few times to be able to see him and it's a lot less, you know, locked down and everything. So it's been a, a blessing. And I thought that's why God gave it to me. I was like, wow, I get to like get out of my very small apartment in Los Angeles and have an adventure during this COVID season. Um, and Anyway, um, it was so interesting because I got there and God started to put all of these women entrepreneurs in my path. And I, when I did my crowdfunding campaign in the video, I'm, it's my admission video, but I say in the description, like, I am going to figure out what we need here and I'm going to bring it back for the women who are really itching to start a business because I believe we are created to create. And anyway, I started to meet, I met one entrepreneur and then another and another and another. And all of them were so lovely. And all of these doors started opening for things that I've prayed for for years. Um, and, you know, whether I say yes to those things or not is quite irrelevant. What it comes down to is that God is listening and that God's going to work and that it doesn't have to be the exact way that I thought it would be. Like, I don't have to maybe have a farm in Malibu to make a difference and be like changing the world. I don't have to be in the heart of Los Angeles, just like trudging my life away in order to like create and make a way for women. I don't, you know, he was reminding me of that. It was super humbling. Cause I had like done, you know, like I didn't really do that much, but I did put in a lot of work on the back end to, to receive these things with him and to make the story a thing. You know, I, I said a lot of yeses to him and I said, you know, I trusted him a lot. And now coming out on the other side, seeing, wow, I don't have to have any of that for him to use me. Like if I had just stayed in Kentucky, he still would have done this. And it like, it makes me want to cry. But I think I just, I didn't realize how worthy I was then. And I didn't realize that I could be used then. And I just, I talk to so many women. I like coach a lot of women and mentor a lot of women in business. And we just stop ourselves from being the tool that God is calling us to be, you know, and that, that stops so many people from being used and heard um, for completely changing the lives of the people who really need you when you're just waiting for that, that next thing. And I do believe in preparation seasons. And I do believe that obviously like everything happens with purpose. I do believe that. Um, and there's a reason I'm here, but it was so humbling to stand in Raleigh, socially distancing from these people and just God make these huge things happen in my life and me realize, okay, like my location is not what is going to make God move, right? Like my courage is not what is going to maybe make God known. Like my story maybe could highlight his goodness, but it's not the main player in this. Like I, I just need to say yes, you know, and, and it's going to look different for every single one of us. And so often when we compare, we block the blessings and that blocks, you know, what he's trying to do through us. So anyway, it's been this huge lesson. It's been so sobering and even just coming back to LA, you know, looking around and I love it here and I don't know what God's going to do. Um, and I, I believe I'm here on purpose, but I also know that you're exactly where you are as you're listening to this on purpose. And I know that you don't have to do this big crowdfunding campaign or have this like quote unquote miracle that sounds sexy. Um, he has something for you right now. And so often we can glorify the past or put hope in the future. But what would it look like if you trusted God with your right now and you just activated on that? That is, that is literally incredible. I, I love what you said about location mainly too, because that's kind of 
we were talking a little bit before we started recording and that's been um, a really big lesson for me, especially with moving back to Texas. And obviously it, you know, I moved here and COVID hit and blah, 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 whatever. We've all heard it a million times. So um, what, it's just like, this is like life right now, but I've had the same thoughts. I'm like, okay, I felt like so much of it, maybe I, maybe I felt like so much of my career was dependent on LA rather than God. And so mm-hmm. I was like, oh, I have to be there. I have to be there. And then almost like COVID hitting and then I had to not renew my lease in LA and now I'm here and it's like it's still the same God like I'm not gonna just like everything isn't gonna fall apart depending on where I live and even then I'm like I don't even know I mean there's a chance at this point still that I'll be getting a place in LA again but I think I just am in a way healthier place almost with just like recognizing where things are coming but it's so interesting what you're saying now this morning I was actually I don't know I I mean okay it's a combination of I've been switching my meds I have not been switching my meds my doctor has I'm not just like doing this behind her back no worries mm-hmm. everyone who's like gonna send me all these <laughs> messages um but my emotions have just kind of been all over the place and I have and someone who's like majorly dealt majorly dealt with um anxiety and depression just kind of off and on since I was like 12 so it's been like 11 years um and it's definitely like hit me I think a little bit more just in the past few months and I think a lot of it is accredited to the medicine has 100% helped me but it's just like now that I'm split like we're switching and blah 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 whatever I'm so for medicine if that's what you need and that I got to the point where like that's what I needed again um but with that obviously as you're or not obviously I don't know if you're not aware of this but when you're trying different medicine and things like that it can sometimes get a little bit worse before it gets better or it's just adjusting to anything new so I feel like I have been like hyper emotional and I'm not an emotional person I'm very calm it takes a lot to work me up I I don't really react much. Like there's certain things that can maybe set me off, but like, I feel like I'm pretty chill and relaxed in that sense. And I'm not someone who typically normally compares myself that much. But even this morning, I'm like, I am being so hard on myself. I'm like, my channel hasn't grown in like years. I'm, this hasn't grown in years. I'm like, I'm not doing anything. And I was so hard on myself. And I was even thinking, I'm like, I, and even as I like, say this stuff or mainly it's like in prayer I won't even like say it out loud because I know it's not true um Mm -hmm. I know that it's not true you know but it's like I still am like halfway believing it even though I'm very well aware that it isn't true and I'm like growth also isn't only just in like numbers on a screen and that's never been my focus either so I'm like I I'm just like clinging to certain things because I'm emotional which is like so ridiculous but it's been a really big thing for me lately is like comparing myself and I'm like, oh, well, so-and-so is doing this and so-and-so is doing that. And then at the same time, I feel trapped because I, it's like COVID and I can't really leave or like do anything. But that has been like really something that I'm working through right now. And I think exactly what you're saying is like talking about the stuff that kind of sucks and the parts that are hard. Like even just with me, like mental health wise, like it's been hard lately. Like I'm like, I am so maybe all over the place, but also just so hard on myself and like getting in my own way with comparison, which is not really something I've dealt with to the extremes before. I've normally been like, we're kind of all in like our own lanes and just comparing yourself slows you down and I'm all about efficiency. So that's how I've like not compared myself as much because I'm like, this is not efficient, but it's definitely been harder. So like even hearing that like really helps me. Good. And I I mean, we're just going to dive into that just quickly too it needs to like be addressed in that like we all feel that right in our own way um but it's so funny because i just think that the enemy attacks in he's not creative you know he just attacks yeah. in the same ways and so often you know whatever he's attacking in is also the place that you're going to see the biggest growth and blessing 100% like that that doubt is planting seeds that can be sown in a deep harvest when you allow that it all to just be handed over to God um and so often the moments in time and I'm curious if you would agree with this and if not that's awesome too I want to discuss I'm curious you know 
when I have felt subconscious about something or um, I've felt deep anxiety around things uh, and I really allowed God to take space in that, um, even when it's not immediately transformed, um, that's where I see the, the like quickest shoots of fruit over time. Um, wow. And I know, you know, so often it, it comes down to like, for me, self-discipline, self-control, self-control and discipline. Those are like the two fruits of the spirit that I like. I have to lean in to <laughs> be able to just like go and, and grow. And it's just crazy to hear you talk about that because like you are stewarding everything that God's given you in a really beautiful way and you're going to continue to. And because you're doing that, he's going to be able to do what he has next. But it's almost like in the now, like giving yourself permission to be like, man, I really want to grow. But right now with what I have, like, how am I going to make sure that every single person that's here knows that I'm so glad they're here. And more than that, that like, this is the purpose that they're going to be leaning into when they're present. Um, that's, it's just cool to like, see you do that. Cause from an outsider perspective, and I know most people listening, it's, you do such incredible work and God moves through you in such huge ways. And like, you're just getting started. So it's so funny for that to come up, you know? Thank you. Yeah, it is such a, it is such a big thing. And I'm also like, I'm hyper aware that there are so many girls, mainly my age, like 18, 24 ish, who mm-hmm. like watch my videos or like listen to the podcast and stuff. And I get questions and it's like, how are you like confident all the time? How are you this? How are you that? And this is like the classic, how we view anyone. Like you don't even have to have any sort of platform on the internet you look at someone and you know you see like highlight reels or you see just what they want to show you and while I do I am someone who I really respect um keeping certain things private and I don't think everything is meant to be shared and you know but if you feel comfortable sharing things like this I think this is like where things actually move and I think this is this matters so much more than sharing like oh I made x amount of money or oh I did this or whatever but even yeah just in the sense of like self-control especially that's a big thing with me is that I have always tried like when I was saying how normally I wouldn't even say it out loud because I know it's not true and I think there's a part of that that is healthy because I think there's a part of that that's like I'm checking my thoughts right but I think it can also get unhealthy where if I'm not like processing it and talking about it with someone And I'm lucky enough to like have a therapist I go to weekly. So that is something that's really helped me. And I, I'm so for therapy. I think it is one of the greatest gifts. And if you're able to go a hundred percent go, but even just having someone you're close with, whether it's like, um, an older sibling or family or like a friend or someone that, you know, from school or church or whatever, I think it's really healthy to also like process through that. But I think there's a difference between like processing through things and then sitting around and like complaining and kind of like, you know, attacking yourself almost like that isn't healthy either. So it's like, I think there's an the in between of like checking your thoughts and like, you're like, okay, that's not true. That's not true. That's not true. I don't want to think about it. And then also there's a point where I think it is healthy to go and process it and talk about that with someone, but not in a way where you're just sitting there attacking yourself and not trying to um, maybe come to not necessarily, I mean, I guess a solution for lack of a, like a better word. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. No, I totally agree with that. And I, and again, it's, it is in the messy middle, you know, where the, the most useful discussion can kind of go around things like this, where it, it's not easy. We, we check ourselves. I guarantee that the people we look up to check themselves daily, probably more, because the closer you get to your purpose, the more you're going to have to be doing that, right? Uh, your curiosity, whatever it is you're pursuing. Um, so just opposition is natural, but it is what you do with it and, and how you keep yourself from entering shame. I think around that too, because like you, you know, checking your thoughts can also become toxic. Too much of anything can be bad, right? So yeah. I agree. Can we shift a little bit into kind of cultivating faith through business? This is 
obviously a like longer question. Um, I love how much you talk about kind of like vision and almost like having a why and connecting just it's overall it's just purpose basically um yeah I just want to hear a little bit about that yeah so gosh I love this question I think when it really comes down to it um I was so afraid to combine my faith and my business and it kept me very quiet for a long time and then I just leaned into business and was kind of quiet about my faith or you know on the other end, I've really gone through all of it. And I just realized that the best part of me is God. And what I, my curiosities have led me to business. And so why would I not allow them to work together? Um, You can find your blend around that as well. Um, But I just, God encounters each of us in a different way. And for me, it's in business. I learned things. I had you know, some different traumatic things happen in my childhood that um, I actually do have a lot of walls up in encountering God in relationship with him. Like I've had to work really hard to grow that and, and see him as a father. Um, And then in my relationships, worldly relationships, but the first place that I have the most trust is in business. So that's kind of why I really talk about it in that way too, because I got to know the heart of my father through the way that he allowed me to move confidently in business, mess up, be great, you know, all of that. It allowed me that playground to understand who God is and who I am. And so um, I think so often we just like look at business and it's like, you know, I need this money to pay this bill and I, or I want to do this so that I can be known for this or, you know, it's, it's that it's very uh, much an idea instead of again, a playground. And I had to learn many times that you can't be attached to one thing, one method, one idea. Um, But when you are devoted to serving someone, then that one person, when you serve that one person and that impact takes place, then God's going to give you a little bit more and a little bit more and a little bit more. And so whatever type of business you want to build, start with your faith, start with that curiosity, understand who God is and who he said you are, because those two things will not shift or change. They're only going to grow as you really facilitate um, the growth in your business through your actions and your devotion to it. Um, But then from there, just again, focusing on the impact and focusing on what are you learning in your quiet time? What lessons has God taught you? How can you create that and serve you know, in that way. If you're selling candles, how are you going to minister in that way? How are you going to create a different experience? And, you know, I think what is so crazy is that people always say, you know, like, oh, that market is so saturated, you know, like there's so many people doing that. Like, it's just not good to do that. That is only because you're interested in it and you have stalked it. And now you know of a lot of people, but there's more than enough for you or anyone who decides to pursue whatever industry that is. That's just the truth. There's 7 billion people. Like there's enough room for you, girlfriend. And I think, you know, getting out of the way in that element and then understanding that you've been created in a different way than all of those 7 billion people. There's a reason you're here. So how are you going to be able to show up through this business channel? Cause that's all it is. It's a channel to serve when it comes down to it, how will you show up and and really show out what God has put in you through that service? Because when you come from that place of abundance, then that's how that money comes in. And I think too, it's just the same as when you're dating someone. If you go on a first date and you're like, hey, so I want like at least two carrots um and i was thinking malibu for a house like mm, he mm, probably won't like that right um because we're assuming a lot of things and i think if you do that with business like this is the one i'm gonna do it with this one or you know like this is gonna pay all my bills i'm gonna put all this pressure on it um if you do that in dating like this is the one you're gonna be my husband dang it dang it dang it like he's gonna probably run away anything you chase runs away it's the same in business if you're like, this is the one, this is my million dollar idea, I'm going to do this, this, you're manic and you're going to wear her out. So coming at it from a place of, again, servitude and then not putting the pressure on it because your business will speak to you. 
it is a mirror. It shows you your weaknesses and your strengths. It shows you how you're going to grow. And more than that, it shows you what people want. And just following those breadcrumbs, it creates a really great way to see God's heart and then a really great way, again, to show his heart to others. That I love that so much. And that is so true, especially just the mirror analogy. Like, that is crazy. Who are some maybe, like, business mentors you look up to or books that you read, podcasts? Like, what um, content are you kind of taking in day to day? Yes. So this has looked different throughout the years, but where I am currently in my entrepreneurial journey, um, one, I have every Monday, I have an hour of CEO time that is outreach. And so I give myself an hour. I'm a digger. I like to dig um, and, and find treasures. I just believe there's treasure under every surface if we look hard enough. And I think from there, um, in that CEO time of just like exploring, I pretty much always deviate to Googling and finding women or men, but usually women business owners um, who are building things that I enjoy. And I always email or DM them. And I'm not doing that because I want anything from them, but I want to encourage them um, and do like the really big ones always reply no will they eventually and I have like a whole stack of things that I've said to them and it's cool totally you know um but I have realized that when I take time to um realize what I love about other people that usually shows me what I should be working on or something that I'm craving in my business or the way that I'm showing up and so that's been really really important to me Um, And that's actually something that I had never heard anyone else did. And so I'm like giving you permission, like you're allowed to to connect with people that you love what they're doing. Um, And the more you set yourself up to be a cheerleader, the more you actually are able to be a cheerleader, because I think there's a lot of envy in business. Um, And you can, that's not of God, right? Like we can get rid of that by cheering others on. So that um, I would say podcasts, you know, I listened to a lot of goal, goal digger growing up, yeah. like, or, you know, in my twenties. Um, right now I, you know, I really used to look up to like Jenna Kutcher and Rachel Hollis. And now it's really interesting because I see everyone as like more of a peer. And so I listen to more of like daily shows and stuff like that on podcasts mm-hmm. or more humor. Um, and, and more like entrepreneurial stuff I actually don't consume. Um, I, I, have started with COVID do an hour of time with my Bible, 30 minutes, 38 minutes in the morning and at night. And I would have judged myself in the past for like, that was just not possible for me. I could have never. Um, but I feel like the most that I've ever learned about business has been in the Bible. And I really think it's like the best business book and, and reading through Nehemiah and, um, Ezekiel and, um, just reading about Moses and, and then Joshua, like there's mm-hmm. so many different things that you can really glean from the Bible in the way that you're showing up in your business. So I would say those things. Um, and then, I mean, I really look up to a lot of women in the South. You know, when I did my crowdfunding campaign, I emailed Tori Birch and she emailed me back. She's like, this is awesome. Apply for my fellowship. you know, when you have your feet on the ground, um, and like some other really big names and I email them still once a year and I will keep those emails and one day I will meet them and hand it to them in a folder. So having like those goals and those tendencies create what it is for you. Um, but it's really grounding and it's really cool to see your growth. So keep track of those things too. I love that. I'm going to start doing that. That is so good. I actually do just, I mean, in podcast outreach, especially like, I feel like I'm already looking at businesses. And as soon as I see something that I, that kind of catches my eyes, I like follow up and I'm, I, I kind of already do that, but I want to, I want to like actually set time like weekly to do that. That is so good. Yeah. It's awesome. It is really like expanded my business in huge ways. It's crazy. And my network and and not not really upwards. A lot of people who maybe are like my peers or 
or below. I know when someone would say like, hey, I believe in what you're doing when I was just started, I was like, really? Because <laughs> I don't know if I do, <laughs> you know? <laughs> so I know the value of that. Um, and yeah, just that kind of thing, or even having a budget aside, if you haven't started a business, then start to do product research. Find founders that you love and products you love and only spend, you know, give yourself $100 a month to buy something, invest in them because you have no idea how much that means to them. And that actually creates a beautiful connection between you two. I love that. Thank you so much for coming on. I absolutely love this episode. Where can they find you? Um, if you go to right up your alley, it's at right up your alley, a double L double E. That's my Instagram. And in my link link tree, you can find my podcast and my website and my different businesses. And I'm launching a really cool flower truck in LA. I think that's the coolest thing ever, by the way. I love that. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh girl, come. Oh my gosh. You're always welcome. Free flowers. I'll be there. Um, but yeah, it's going to be incredible. Once all of this passes, it's in an old Bronco. So if you would go check that out, because that's definitely my new brainchild. Um, but yeah, that is the best place. Amazing. Thank you. People tell me that I burn out. I tell them I'm not like the rest.